sounds very strange, but the evolution of trading is actually quite it's it's something quite interesting and I've thought about this a lot sort of on a sort of a re an introspective basis. You start out buying comic books as a kid, right? You basically sort of or you know GI Joes or Marbles or something like that. You um, you trade them with your friends and you you know you buy buy a few comic books and you think oh here Spider-Man's going to meet the Hulk in the next issue or in this issue or in, and they might make a movie about the Hulk. So, uh, oh, I got to get this issue, and you hope in a year or two that it might go up to two or three dollars or something like that. And then you put them in like a nice little plastic wrap and everything else like that, and that's great. Um, then when you turn eighteen or so, sort of, you know, you know, your granddad or your sort of mom and dad might give you a few hundred bucks basically for your birthday, and you have a bit of an interest sort of in the stock market, and so you start buying some penny stocks or some shares in some bank that you think has got a good advertising campaign or a snowboard company even. Something that's very sort of simple, and you, know, you might make fifty bucks, and you know what? This is fantastic, and these are all risks that you're comfortable with, and then you kind of fast forward a few years, and you've been given a job on a trading desk, and they start you off with really small stuff, and your P and L, you know, each day is sort of you know up a thousand, you know, sort of down two hundred. Oh, you make five thousand one day, and you have one really bad day where you lose 20,000 and you're sitting there at the end of the day and you're thinking, oh my God, this is gonna be my last day. Should I start loading up my bag with all my, with all my stuff in my drawers? My boss is just not gonna look at me. And then, you know, you sit down, you write your sort of P&L statement, you kind of slide it over cautiously to your boss, like a note, like you don't even wanna say it, you're so embarrassed. And he's like, okay, why did that happen? And then you realize, you explain it. And he's like, okay, well, now you've learned. And you actually realize that basically from that experience, as long as you understand what you're doing and you can explain what you're doing, it's actually kind of fine. As long as you're not being irresponsible and you actually understand the risk that you're taking. And from that point there, the evolution is actually quite, quite asymmetrical in that they just start adding zeros onto the end. So in theory, if you actually think of it on a purely philosophical level, the more exposure to nothing actually creates larger results, which is a, the which is probably one of the most bizarre industries. So, you know, if you think of it on that concept, so for some reason, like you know, the more zeros you give me, basically, the more money I can make or lose, and this is kind of what essentially risk is. And so, risk is just being comfortable fundamentally with the amount of zeros you have at the end of your limit. And it sounds very strange, but the principles are very much the same from trading a comic book with your friends to actually sort of managing portfolios of hundreds of millions of dollars. The only difference is, is one has to understand, the, the only thing someone has to learn along the way is um, how to gauge liquidity. And so you have to realize there's always going to be a market for comic books, but you know that you're only going to be able to trade it with your five friends. It's sort of as you kind of go sort of further and further along the chain, you actually realize there's always going to be sort of someone who's going to want government bonds, but you have to make sure there's enough people who are actually interested in the story for you to actually buy as many as you actually want.